So, you want to learn logo design. You're at the right place. Or video? Anyways, in our video today, we will discuss ways in which you can learn how to design logos. This, of course, will focus on teaching yourself this craft, not which universities, programs, or workshops to go to. If that sounds like something you would like to know, buckle up and let's jump right into it. First things first, you will need to teach yourself the basics in order for you to be able to create something at all. These basics can range from technical aspects of design to how to handle software and hardware. The basics of the basics when it comes to logo design are principles of design. What we all first notice upon looking at a logo or any design for that matter is how beautiful, creative, and eye-catching it is. This is not just because the artist behind it was creative with it. This is more so because the artist followed a set of rules to make sure their design appeals to your eyes and engages them for a certain purpose. If an ad directs your attention to a certain area or makes you feel a certain way, it's because the artist intended it to and most likely used these principles to construct what you see. These principles relate to all things visual, so they are not tailor-made for logo design only. They expand to other creative areas such as illustration and graphic design as a whole, for instance. In short, these principles are emphasis, balance and alignment, contrast, repetition, proportion, movement, and white space. Learning about these principles can really transform the way you observe designs around you and help take your logos to the next level. We'll talk about each one in short, but we highly recommend you expand on your knowledge on these through tutorials or other resources. Emphasis. Simply put, when you're designing a logo, what is the focal point of it? Balance and alignment. Your designs need to be balanced in the placement of their elements. If you place too many details in one spot while the rest is empty, that'll make for an unpleasant viewing experience. Contrast. When you want to go for a colorful design, not everything can be bright and bold. There needs to be a juxtaposition of elements and colors. Some need to be bright and bold and other faint and tame. This helps the bold elements pop and gives the viewer's eyes rest with the tame elements. Repetition Repetition is all about using repeating elements to your advantage in a design to unify it and give it a cohesive look. Proportion How elements of different sizes and weights are placed within a design to make it look balanced. Movement Using different elements of your design to guide the viewer's eyes from one spot to the other. White space. White space is all about employing nothingness and the empty areas of a design to your advantage. If you're thinking that these are intertwined or that one is synonymous with the other, you're not completely wrong. Principles of design work all together and getting one principle right might help organically set up another principle in your design correctly, which helps create a cohesive look to your work. Before we continue, let me tell you about Skillshare, which is a platform that has hundreds of classes about animation, drawing, illustration, and several other creative fields. We've got you guys this course from Skillshare about logo design and its theory. The course is mainly designed for intermediates who know some basics about design. It is taught by Lindsay Marsh, who will teach you the full logo design process. The course includes various topics such as logo theory, topography, color palettes, execution, and more. The Skillshare platform offers a wide variety of additional related courses, and the first 1,000 people to click the link in the description will receive a free month of premium membership. All right, now back to the video. Color theory. Learning color theory is essential in creating good logo design. Not every color goes with just any other color. Colors can affect each other in a lot of ways. There are a number of different color schemes that work together and help communicate a feel to your designs from analogous to monochromatic to complementary colors. Colors themselves communicate an atmosphere. With warm colors like red, orange, and yellow giving warmth and coziness 
while cool colors like blue, purple, and green communicate a cold and fresh vibe. These concepts would be essential in creating good logo design, and you would need to learn about them and then apply them to your logos and the vibe they communicate. Learning about software you can't make logos without using the software that helps make them now, can you? You will need to get on tutorials and courses that help you learn software like Photoshop, InDesign, Affinity Design, and Illustrator to name a few. Thankfully, YouTube is brimming with such tutorials. If you have a background in digital art, then you'd know you're in luck, as most digital art software are built and function in somewhat of the same way. If not, we highly recommend starting to learn about these software as soon as you start your logo design journey, as learning about digital art software can be challenging at first. Learning about hardware As you learn your way through the software, you will also need to teach yourself how to use a graphics tablet, assuming you know all about computers. More often than not, graphic designers only need a regular graphics tablet that does not have a display. They're cheaper than display tablets and get the job done just fine. However, since you'd be drawing on a surface and looking at another with a graphics tablet, they can have quite the steep learning curve and can make you feel awkward and out of control. So you might want to get yourself one as soon as possible and start getting used to it and how it works. A couple quick tips we can give you are use your graphic tablet as a mouse to help you get used to how it works, and align your tablet to your monitor. Don't move it to the side. Oh, and make sure your elbow and hand are supported, so you can avoid carpal tunnel syndrome and tennis elbow. Learning about resources the graphic design industry is a big one, and with that comes great communities that help provide plenty of resources to learn and create. It is imperative as a logo designer to have access to these resources. To name a few, we have Pexel and Freepik, image banks with countless photos and graphic elements that help you create graphic designs. YouTube's countless tutorials are also a big source of learning and inspiration. The more you delve in the world of graphic design and logo design, the more you'll find plenty of resources that you absolutely need to use to your advantage. Practice We have all heard the age-old saying, practice makes perfect? Well, it is true here. The more logos you make, the better you'll get at the craft. If you're still getting used to how the hardware and software aspects of graphic design work, we recommend you sketch out different logos with pencil and paper. Most graphic designers do this to brainstorm anyways, so you wouldn't be missing much. You can either create your own personal projects for logos or create fake client work to help you exercise. Another great way to get your creative juices running would be to do other creative activities, such as digital scrapbooking, bullet journaling, and drawing. These might help you get a better understanding of principles of design, color theory, and even serve as an exercise to learn graphic design software. And proper graphics tablet use. Not to mention, they're super fun to do. Inspiration Staying inspired is a big part of creating fun and engaging logos. Inspiration can be invoked by joining spaces and communities for logo artists. This will help you stay in the loop about what's trendy as well as staying informed about the latest innovations in those spaces. Graphic design communities are huge on social media like Instagram and TikTok as well as other platforms such as ArtStation and YouTube. Not only will these help keep you inspired, but they can also teach you a lot. All you have to do is stay tuned and use your observation skills to learn from other artists. Not to mention how down the line, creating an account to present your work to the world might put you on the map and help potential clients find you should you want to become a freelance logo designer. Another interesting platform is Pinterest, the number one website to get great inspiration. Creating an account solely for graphic design and logo design and training the algorithm to show you graphic design related content can really help curate your page to show you creme de la creme content that will surely help you stay inspired. Rinse and repeat. 
And that's basically it, except you will always need to be doing it. It is a virtuous cycle of learning, practicing, and staying inspired. You will always be learning the principles of design, color theory, and other basics as they are the fundamentals of this craft. And like Bobby Chewy said, fundamentals are like a pencil. You will always need to sharpen them again at some point. You will then use your knowledge to create beautiful designs and would use inspiration to keep that cycle going. And that was that for our video. We hope this has helped you learn where to get started with logo design. Let us know what you thought in the comments below. With that being said, we hope to see you in the next one.